We are students from Bachelor of Arts, Interior Architecture. Our group members are both Cheryl, Sharon, Naya, Cindy, Aisha, Liberty, and Catherine. In this video, we are focusing on the beliefs, superstitions, and attire of the Melina people. The Melina people are originally animists. Now, the majority of the Melinas are Muslim, although some, especially among the Melanomuka and Dalin are Christian. Nonetheless, many still celebrate traditional rites such as the annual Kal festival. Despite their different beliefs and religions, the Melinas are very tolerant of each other. One can come across a Melina family with different children in the family embrace in Christianity and Islam, while their parents still have strong animist beliefs. In their animistic beliefs, the Melina people believe that the physical world is influenced by the metaphysical world in regards to the existence of other worldly beings and spirits. They are surrounded by forests and seas which form the source of their livelihood. This has influenced their belief system, abiding by animistic beliefs, in which they believe that their relationship with the cosmos must be well protected and that human beings are weak creatures who need the intervention of the epochs. They believe that every corner of this world is protected by the spirits, called the epoch. Epochs watch over the four corners of this world and assist humans in their daily lives. It is the epoch that provides peace, well-being, fortune and all things good. The epoch can also cause disaster, misfortune and diseases if they are not respected. The Melan people believe in four epochs. They are the epoch Laut, epoch Sera Wong, epoch Balao and epoch Yang. The epoch Lao represents the water symbol with its cool and moist characteristics. The Melina people have a close affinity with water due to their location of living near the sea or at river mouths. Fierce and hot temper to represent the hot and dry fire symbol, Epoch Bala provides light to the lives of the Melina community, giving them their livelihood from the resources found in the forest. Epoch Sara Wang represents the guardian of the sky, representing the air. For seafarers, wind plays a very important role to aid them in their voyages. Finally, the Epoch e Young represents the Earth symbol. Based on these beliefs, rituals are done with the main aim of respecting and asking permission from these spiritual beings. It is manifested in two main traditions known as the Pestacol and Burbayu Ritual. First, we will be taking a look at the beginning of the Pestacol ceremony itself. Pestacol is held annually in Bulan Pangharjin, which is the month of the spirits of the Melina calendar, which is usually in the end of April. It is believed to have been practiced for more than 300 years and is believed to have been first practiced when the measles and diarrhea epidemic hit several villages and many people, from young to old, died. All efforts to stop the disease from claiming more life failed until one day a man from the Baramapo village was given a sign through a dream. In his dream, this man was told that to prevent the spread of the disease, the spirit which is causing the disease needs to be appeased and fed. To appease the spirits, the first call ceremony was held. After the ceremony was held, the disease was said to stop spreading. Since then, call has been held. Next is about the Sarahung, in which all the offerings are kept for the spirits. It is a basket made from young nipa palm leaves, tuggle leaves and awu nisang. Taking a look at the characteristics, it is about 7 feet tall and has its own shape, components and elements. The main structure of Sarahung is the bamboo stick. The other parts include the paka, turbisik, tedilip, burburang and perdik, with the total number which reflects the spirit and the layers of the earth. Sarahung has motives which show the cosmology of the Melina community. It shows the seven layers of the world, that is on top in seven layers of the world, that is below the middle layer. Specific expertise is needed to weave the Sarah Hung. Moving on is the celebration of call. The traditional announcement done by the beating of drums throughout the village is still practiced. At the start of call, the highly decorated fishing boats move down river carrying the Sarah Hung, a flat round basket raised on a bamboo pole. It is placed on a river bank, while the Bapakal or leader of the ceremony invokes the spirits and pours water over the offerings, 
The modernized call is celebrated by having a variety of activities in the past. The sick and elderly would gather by the Sarahung so that the water poured on the offerings would fall on them and wash away all evil. Having the Tiba is one of the compulsory features of the celebration. The Tiba, the death-defying 20-foot high swing, is one of the highlights of call. Here youths dive from a high bamboo scaffolding and catch a swinging liana rope as it reaches the height of its arc. First one, then two, and eventually eight young men hanging in a clump from the giant's wing as it soars above the beach. The main taboo is that they are forbidden from going out to the sea. In the past, boats were not allowed to leave the river mouth for three days. Another taboo which must be adhered to is that the call participants are not allowed to take away food, which has been served during the ceremony. The spiritual meaning of call relates to how the appeased spirits will in turn provide the people security, prosperity and well-being in the months ahead until the next ceremony. The ceremony is held in the belief that it will appease the spirits of the sea, river and forest representing Epoch Balao and Epoch Laut. Moving on to the next ritual in the Melanaw culture, Burbayu. What is it? Based on the beliefs of Epoch as the manifestation of the cosmos, the Melanaw community's Burbayu ritual exemplifies man's relationship and communication with the Epoch for purposes of healing. It is believed that the sickness in a person's body is caused by the imbalance and the forces of cosmology. Who is involved in this ritual? To cure the illness caused by imbalance, the Bamo would call upon the epochs. The Burbayu Bamo is a respected member of the community due to his ability to cure diseases. He is the intermediary between the sick person and spiritual beings. He alone is able to provide the cure for the sick individuals who are disturbed. The Bamo's expertise comes about from his ability to control these spirit beings. How is it done? Mantras play a very important role in the Burbai's ritual because it is the communication code used by the Bamo in the ritual. Through these mantras, the Bamo are able to better understand their society and justify the physical and spiritual lives, helping them to be enlightened about the happenings in their world. Mantras are not just mere words and sentences. They form a symbolic means of mystical communication full of loaded meanings. The Bamo needs to learn all these mantras and special sayings, for in them are embedded the names of the spiritual beings who would be summoned or possessed. If the Bamo cannot understand the names and presence of the spiritual beings, then he is not fit to become a Bamo, for he needs to summon them in the healing rituals. A person well-versed in mantras is a very knowledgeable and learned person, because he would know about the existence of things and other beings, and he would be able to control and manipulate the essence and spirits of these beings. Where is the ritual held? It is usually performed in the house of the sick person, although it can also take place at the Bamo's house, depending on the needs and demands of the spiritual beings. All requests and demands must be made known to the Bamo through a special procedure, which would be conducted by the Bamo himself. When is it performed? The Burbayu ritual is done only at night, because it is believed that the time dimension is different between the physical and spiritual world whereby night is day for the spiritual beings, and they would be most active and alert to carry out their tasks at this time. The Burbayu healing ritual takes place for seven consecutive nights, with the third night being the climax of the rich ritual. The first night is conducted by the Bamo, alone in his own house. It entails a bargaining process between the Bamo and the spiritual beings regarding the preparations needed for the Burbayu healing ritual. During the second night, the spirits would demand certain types of offerings to be prepared, and the Saladai dance which must be performed. It is to finalize the items which the spiritual beings have demanded and the rules to be followed during the course of the healing ritual. The third night is the climax of the entire ritual. Offerings are prepared by the Bamo according to the spirits. Then, the Bamo burns incense in its special container, the Dupa. He then places it on a plate and covers with the Ghana young drum. The Bamo then plays the Ghana young drum accompanied by other musicians. 
Simultaneously, he also recites mantras asking spiritual beings to descend and help to combat the evil spirits. Next is the scanning process where he places a lighted candle opposite the face of the drum, which completely covers his head and face. Then, the bottle swallows the lighted candle to extinguish the light and rubs it over the head of the sick person to neutralize the cosmos of the sick person. Water extinguishing the heat of the fire would restore the balance of the patient's personal cosmology. The sick person is also fanned with the Mahyang Pinang and the Terbao Wan leaves to balance the sick person's cosmology in the form of the wind element. To complete the elements of cosmology, rose petals are scattered on the sick person, representing the earth element. Soon, the sick person begins to lose consciousness indicating that the spiritual beings are present and ready to help find a cure for his sickness. The Bamo and the sick start threading on glass shards signifying that spirits have taken over. This is when the Salad I dance, performed by seven male and seven female unmarried dancers, starts as well. The Bamo waves I some pisse leaves around the dancers' bodies to signify the connection between the physical bodies of the dancers and the metaphysical realm of the Bamo. It is also a symbol of the wind cosmology to acknowledge Epoch Ser Awang. Then the Bamo swallows the candle, representing Epoch Palau, to balance the cosmology of the performance. He then rubs the Mei Ang Penang all over the body of the sick person. He takes the drum to cover the dupa on a plate as he passes the Ma Hyung Pi known to the sick person. Finally the Bamu removes the Gun Ah Yang drum together with the plate out of the performance area indicating the end of day 3. must be adhered to by the Bamo and the sick person as specified earlier by the spiritual beings on the second night. The last night is considered to be the night of the healing process, which requires the sick person to prepare offerings for the spiritual beings as payment for having successfully healed her sickness. The items required to ritually conclude the healing process are gold, a small javelin, or any sharp object to represent the bones which are believed to be the favorite food of the spiritual beings, and a live chicken. Let's take a look at the current trends. Currently, the Burbayu ritual healing has lost its original function, becoming less important and almost ignored by the Melanaw community, which is undergoing aggressive transformation in their daily lives as they change their jobs, their economic sources and their belief systems. One of the reasons for these changes is because of the spread of Islam and Christianity amongst the Melana community. These two religions have changed the worldview and beliefs of the formerly animistic Melana people, resulting in changes to their cosmology, tradition, beliefs, rituals and cultural practices. The Burbayu ritual based on the animistic paradigms and cosmology is in direct opposition with the Christian and Islamic religious beliefs. As such, the Burbayu healing ritual is no longer significant in the lives of the Melanaw community. Moving on to the attire of the Melanaw community. The traditional Melanaw costume for men is called the Bagan. This costume bears strong resemblance to the traditional outfit worn by Malay men, called the Baju Malayu, and it even incorporates the wearing of a samping around the waist. Commonly, the men wear a handsome fit in jacket cut tunic with brocade samping, canary green chiffon shawl as waistband and a Javanese styled headgear. Similarly, the traditional attire for the Melana women folk closely resembles the Bajuku Rong donned by Malay ladies. For women, they wear black satin blouses, 
Yellow song gets our wrong. Red embroidered chest decoration complete with string pendant. That concludes our video for now about the belief system, superstitions and attire of the Melano community. We understand that the Melano community believe in the cosmology of the elemental epoch who guard the world and its well-being. From this belief stems rituals like the Kal festival and Burbayu healing ritual. However, due to the rise of Islam and Christianity, some rituals are no longer relevant. Finally, we also talked about the attire of traditional Melano men and women. We hope that this video has been eye-opening, helpful and interesting. We hope that it inspires you to be more appreciative of indigenous cultures in Malaysia and advocate for their preservation. Thank you for watching and listening to this video. Goodbye.